you've been recording in Russia with a band called Aquarium for oh, about 15 years or more now, but 17 years, I was right, or more. Um, up until a few years ago, the, though, the music was not allowed to be uh, out in the public in, in Soviet Union. That's right. Well, it was out in the public, only not through official channels. Everybody have it anyway. But it was, it had to be underground, it was uh, apparently against the state. Kind of a little bit, it's not really a crime. So, and the underground makes it more interesting, maybe more sincere. Now what happened, I guess in 1987, the Russian, the, or the state label, Mel Melodica? Melodia. Melodia, uh, released a few aquarium records and they sold three and a half million, but the band received no royalties? Well, Melodia never pays its artist. And, so, so how is it a uh, Russian musician can, can make a living even like through the underground? Did you get, ever get any uh, returns from, from the music? Well, right now people are playing live and, and this, this way they can earn some money. Now, eight, 1985 was a big year when uh, Gorbachev came in and introduced Glasnost and uh, Perestroika. Uh, when this first came about, did you trust it? No. Another bunch of words, nothing more. It was like a year later when something started, slowly started to happen. And uh, now that it's been around for, what, four years now, what are your feelings towards it now? Is it for real? Well, I'm here. So a lot of other people are doing what they want, so. Back home, what, what are some of the changes musically since Perestroika, say in the clubs, the mu musical style, maybe the lyrical content? That... A lot of uh, not so popular bands, they jumped on a bandwagon and they're trying to be, desperately trying to be political. And that's funny. Is that still too loud? Oh, okay, we'll keep going. Now, since it's all opened up and the, uh, people are allowed to record and play freely in the clubs, has, um, is the underground spirit missing or what's the state of like the spirit of rock and roll in, in Russia right now? Well, things are slowly changing in big cities like Leningrad and Moscow, but in you know, most of the small towns, things are still the same, so the underground is still thriving. Now, what, what might you, what do you believe that maybe a, a Russian musician, as opposed to say a, a Western or an American musician, has um, as a, what, what does he have over maybe someone from here, or a, a certain point of view or something that, that, that he can relate to that the rest of us can't? Do you feel there's an advantage of, of any type coming from that situation that you had been involved in for so many years? Mm. I think uh, in America, for example, there is more emphasis on uh, rhythm and uh, like sheer power of music. And I think a lot of people in Russia pay more attention to the spiritual power of it. A lot of uh, the classic Russian writers and and uh, literary works of Russians were. Uh, focused on morality and, and philosophy. Do you think this carries over with the, the Russian music as well? Uh, you see, we touched on a really interesting thing right here, because like the Russian writers were the spiritual leaders of a country in the 18th century. Like the Russian poets sometimes fulfill this role. It's the same here, um, it's same in Russia with the uh, rock and roll musicians. If like we have like five or ten people whom millions of people trust, you can't call it otherwise than a spiritual teacher. So, uh, and I think that's the role that rock and roll should fulfill. And it's a pity that people here seem to be working more for money or fame or something else. And uh, I mean, you listen to MTV and you don't expect to hear anything that will make your life different. That's not like it's supposed to be, right? We're supposed to be something else, not entertainers. If people want to entertain, they can go to nightclubs in Las Vegas and entertain. 
People shouldn't be on stage to entertain. What personally, what kinds of messages are you trying to get across with your music and words? The messages that I'm trying to convey are much more than words. I mean, I cannot express them otherwise that, than I do in songs. And that's a message that for everybody to pick up and decipher for themselves. Songs are like mirrors. They just reflect what's going on in people's souls.